Hello there, my name is Luke and welcome to another non-league news flash. Today we bring you up to date with the latest news from non-league. We'll be recording this as we get through the week. So today it is Tuesday and I'm going to start with the news from the weekend in terms of signings. The scores from the weekend, that was in my last non-league news flash, you'll have a link in the description. So there's been some signings over the weekend. Dion Charles, a big signer for FC Halifax Town. He's a winger and signs on loan from Fleetwood until the end of the season. He was with AFC Fylde for a couple of years before and they wanted to keep him but Fleetwood managed to poach him. Boston United made two signings. They brought in Louis Briscoe, he's a striker on loan from Tamworth and Manny Di Sarivway, another striker on loan from my club Kiddo Insta Harriers. From a Harriers perspective, I'm happy with this. I think it suits everyone. Manny well, hasn't been, well, he hasn't really been playing at all much recently. He was down to third choice striker, so he's not going to be getting much game time. It suits him to be moving out. A young player going out, getting, getting game time. That's what he needs. He's a good player. I think he'll do well for Boston. Wildstone signed former Boreham Wood striker Mustafa Tiriaki. Now on to Monday and York City signed left-back Sam Muggleton who was released by Eastleigh recently after Martin Allen left. He was used as a make-way in the deal that meant that Luke Coulson moved to Barnet and that basically Coulson went to Barnet and then some money plus Muggleton went to Eastleigh. But he hasn't really played for Eastleigh, they've released him. He's a left-back, he's got a really long throw, that's pretty much all he's known for. So when they've got a really long throw and then people like parking up front you can see a tactic that York City are trying to develop. Sutton United have re-signed midfielder Chris Nurse. He's a Guyana international and he's in his second spell at Sutton United. Now on to Tuesday and it started off with a massive bit of news for my club, Kidderminster Harriers. We signed a striker named Joe Ironside. He scored 18 goals in all competitions this season for an Eton Town and he makes the move across the Midlands to Kidderminster. It's a big, it's a big deal for Harriers. He's a player that's prolific at this level this season, it's what we've been missing, hopefully he's that missing piece in the jigsaw and the money that's been used to sign him came from the crowdfunding campaign that was put together for January, the money hasn't been spent in January and we've just saved it up until now, £10,000 was raised from the fans and it's been spent on this guy, generally the fans are happy with this signing and he signed on a two year contract until the summer of 2019, he's a long term signing, hopefully he's going to be good and hopefully he'll score some goals starting tonight. We're playing against Tamworth tonight. If he, if he gets a goal or two, would absolutely love it. On to the other news that's happened today on Tuesday, Jake Phillips has signed for Welling United from Margate. He is a defender. Dartford have signed a young goalkeeper on loan from Brighton and Hove Albion. His name is Billy Collings. He's there for a month. And finally, another big blow for Nuneaton. Jordan Nicholson has left the club. He was there on loan from Peterborough and he has been recalled early after scoring 13 goals in 19 games under Tommy Wright. He's had a very productive spell there and it's another player, another big player that they've lost. They've lost their two big goal scorers today. So it's now Wednesday and yesterday on Tuesday night there were some big games in non-league. So let's get into the roundup of that. So in the National League, Old Shot beat Dagenham and Redbridge 3-1. Barrow drew one all with Wrexham. Boreham Wood beat Lincoln 2 0, a very big statement by Boreham Wood, and it's disappointing for Lincoln because they actually drop off the top spot now. Forest Green with their 2 1 victory over Solihull take over that top spot, even though Lincoln do have three games in hand now over Forest Green and they're only three points behind. Woking beat Braintree 3 1. Chester's season continues to crumble, they lost 3 2 at home to Macclesfield. Gates Edry 1 0 with Geisley. Maidstone drew one all with Sutton, a big game down the bottom there. Thanks to a Jay Harris hat-trick, Tranmere beat North Herbie 4-1. Eastleigh beat Torquay 3-2. And the game of the day, two teams in the relegation zone, York versus Southport. York came out on top with an emphatic 5-3 victory. So now the league table, Forest Green take over that top spot with Lincoln in second, three points behind but with three games in hand. Tranmere in third. Dagenham and Redbridge in 4th and Gateshead in 5th. Down at the bottom, Torquay slip into the drop zone in 21st. York are in 22nd, North Ferriby in 23rd and bottom are Southport in 24th. So now into the National League North and there were some really important games in this league as well. We'll start off with Alfreton who beat Boston 1-0. Nuneaton went away to Altrincham and won 3-1. Filed with a great result that for Harriers. A 0-0 draw, Filed versus Stockport. So Filed have dropped more points. Halifax came from behind to beat Gainsborough 2-1. Salford got a late equaliser against Chorley to draw one all. Sailor Ridge versus Harrogate was postponed. And then the big result for me, I'll talk about that last, because Brackley 
beat Worcester City 2-1. But Tamworth versus Kidderminster Harriers, new signing Joe Ironside that we bought yesterday for, I believe, around about £25,000. That was made possible due to the crowdfunding campaign, which raised £10,000. So without that money, wouldn't be able to bring him in. And he got two goals yesterday. I joked about him getting a hat-trick, but two goals, absolutely brilliant. In terms of the table, that now leaves Fylde still at the top on 75 points. Kidderminster are in second on 66, but they have a game in hand. So potentially winning our game in hand, the gap could go down to six points. Salford are in third, Chorley in fourth, and Halifax are in fifth. Down at the bottom, Gainsborough, they haven't won in a long time, and they're still on 30 points. They're stuck there, and they've got an awful run in as well, so I can't see them picking up any more points. It's a worry for Gainsborough, they're in 20th. Stadium Bridger in 21st and Altrigan at the bottom on 22nd place. Moving into the National League South and surely this match day in the National League South has to have the record for the most goals per game on average because the amount of goals scored, wow, some really high scoring games. Dartford beat Margate 4-0, Chelmsford beat East Thurrock 2-1. Now we're into the proper high scoring games. Well, Dartford winning 4-0, that's fairly high scoring but not compared to some of these. Eastbourne beating Welling 7-3 and incredibly after 80 minutes this game was just 3 all. Eastbourne went and scored 4 goals in the last 10 minutes to make it look like a really emphatic scoreline. It was also really important in the title race, Ebsfleet showing no mercy towards Bishop Stortford winning none less than 8-0. They're trying to boost their goal difference and Maidenhead were doing exactly the same. They ended up winning 6-1 versus Oxford City. On any other match day, 6-1 is an emphatic, brilliant victory to boost their goal difference. But actually, that only increased their goal difference by 5, whereas Ebsfleet increased their goal difference by 8. So, unbelievable match day. Also a very important victory. You can't underestimate the importance of the victory for Gosport in a 1-0 victory over Bath City. Back-to-back -back victories now for Gosport and gives them a fighting chance of staying up. And finally, Paul Town climbed back into the playoffs with a 2-0 victory over Truro City, who are now just hovering just above that drop zone. So onto the league table, and it stays the same up at the top. Maidenhead is still top, Ebsfleet one point behind in second, Dartford in third, Chelmsford in fourth, and Paul Town in fifth. All of the top five winning yesterday. Then down at the relegation zone, Gosport are in 20th, Bishop Stortford in 21st, and Margate still bottom in 22nd place. So that's it for Tuesday night's matches. Let's hop back into the time machine and move forward in time again. <laughs> 